to our mechanical testing laboratory. And here uh, we have various types of mechanical testing machines. Um, behind me you can see um, our newest addition to the lab. Um, this is a, what we call a universal testing machine. It's capable of tensile testing, or pulling something apart, compression testing, squishing it, um, and also bend testing. So we kind of just support it in two places and then bend it like that to see uh, when it breaks. And what we're measuring in these tests are how much load is applied to the sample and how far it moves. And um, the technical explanations for that are stress and strain. So if we look at these equations, um, your little mechanical testing lesson for this day will be uh, to basically um, say that as a material scientist, we can take a piece of metal that's this big, we can test it, and then we can translate those numbers into something where we can say, okay, if we have a much bigger sample, how much load can that handle? If we're making a bridge or whatever type of large structural object, we'll know if that material is going to work, but we only need a piece about this big. So the stress means that we take the force and we divide it by uh, this area that is being pulled, um, and that will get a number in like pounds per square inch, as an example for units. And for the strain, we'll say we started with something that was this long, maybe like three inches, and we stretched it, and maybe it stretched twice as far. So we would essentially translate that into a percentage, we'll say it stretched 100%, something like that. Okay. Now you'll notice it has kind of a weird shape. This is called a dog bone sample. You'll notice it's reduced in the middle. Um, that's because we're going to grip it on the ends of the sample and pull it. And we don't want those grips to affect um, where the sample uh, breaks. We don't want it to create any local concentrations of stress or affect the strength in those areas. So we're basically making sure that it fails somewhere in the middle here. This is actually a sample of aluminum 6061. We've heat treated it, and you can actually see some of these like textural effects if I wrote, if I like uh, reflected off the light, that we can see um, the material was soft at first, and as we pulled it, it actually got harder in these spots as it was being pulled. We call that strain hardening. So the material scientist uh, student will often see a, a curve like this when we consider uh, how much load is being applied versus how far it stretches. Uh, we have a couple of distinct regions of this curve we call stress strain curve. In the beginning, we have this linear portion. This is actually measuring sort of the strength of those atomic bonds and is inherent for the material itself. We call it the stiffness, right? So we can take the slope of this portion, we call it the Young's modulus, or the stiffness modulus, and it will be the measure of those atomic bonds. At some point, we exceed the limit of those bonds, and we start to break those atomic bonds. And after that point, we call it plastic deformation, or that deformation is permanent. It, will, it won't go back to its original shape. right? And for that, we call it a yield stress. And as we continue, you'll notice the graph keeps going up. This is that strain hardening that I was talking about, where as I pull it, it becomes harder. It actually becomes stronger. So this graph will continue to rise until we reach maybe the limit of how strong it can actually get. At that point, um, those sort of atomic defects we've been creating sort of kind of build up and build up and eventually start to rip through the material and will eventually fail it. Um, at that peak stress that we consider, we call it an ultimate tensile strength. And often that's a number that's reported in literature for how strong the material can be. And that could change based on how it's heated and cooled, as, as we said before. Um, at some point, we'll have a failure. So um, that will be the strain at failure, or maybe maybe at the stress, but maybe a little bit later, too. Um, and the shape of this curve will often depend on what material class we're talking about. Polymers stretch a lot more than ceramics do. So that graph will be very shallow, but very long. Um, and ceramics are uh, you know, very brittle. And so this, and very stiff, so this curve will be very steep and may fail sort of very abruptly or catastrophically um, at its peak. So this curve will tell us a lot about how the material behaves under certain loading conditions. Um, we can also do things like twist the material or test it under higher temperatures or things like that. So aside from that, we also have a very cool piece of equipment over here. 
called an impact tester. Um, and what it does, it's, it's all in its name, so it impacts things. And this, we do this test because um, materials behave differently if we, if we apply load at a very slow rate or a very fast rate. You can think of silly putty, for example. If I, if I draw silly putty out really slow, it'll uh, neck into a very small, uh, almost, uh, almost invisible little fiber that connects it. But if I pull silly putty very fast, um, it will snap almost immediately. So the same thing kind of happens with um, metals as well, but to a different extent. So the sample that we put into this tester is in this geometry. So you see that we can start, we start it with a, an existing defect of a, a specific size so that we can compare it. And also for the same reason that we make sure that it fails at the location that we want it to. We put this sample into our impact tester. You can, we put it onto a little stage down here with that notch facing um, the opposite of the side that's being hit. So if we hit it from this side, the notch will start a crack on the opposite side. That will be in tension as we bend it like this. All right, um, so the way this works is we have a 60 pound hammer and it starts at two feet off the ground. So if you remember from physics, we have a potential energy and that equals MGH or um, it's mass times the gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, two feet. Um, in imperial units, this is going to be um, 120 foot pounds. So we have 60 feet times two feet high. And we're going to release the lever. It's going to swing through, um, hit the sample, and swing to a height on the other side. Now that height is not going to be as high as two feet. So that difference in height will actually be the energy that's lost in that process. And that's the energy that the sample absorbed when it got hit. Right? So it will swing and this lever will get pushed out to some number on the scale. If it swings all the way to two feet on the other side, it will go to zero. And if it swings less high, then it will increase in the number after that. So we'll actually test this sample and see how strong it is. So we just push this lever toward the wall. And we can see that on the bottom of this scale, um, it was roughly 20 to 21 foot-pounds of force. So if we heat treat steels in different ways, we can actually make it zero or all the way up to maybe 119 foot-pounds. And so that will tell us one about the brittleness of the steel and maybe in a building like the Freedom Tower in New York City, they use 13 different grades of steel based on how much they need that steel beam to flex versus how much strength it needs to have. So just a little insight into the world of mechanical testing materials.